Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Spill the D. I'm Rick, one of your co-hosts, and I'm joined, as always, with my lovely co-host, Gina. How are you? I'm doing so good. How are you? Doing pretty good. Love to hear it. You ready to talk Disney? Yeah, I mean, you're going to be doing most of the talking today. I'm more of just a bystander today, but I'll be giving some questions and input to the best of my abilities. Yeah, today we're doing My Perfect Day at Hollywood Studios. So far, past episodes, we have done... Both of our perfect days at Magic Kingdom and your perfect day at Animal Kingdom. If anyone wants to go back and listen to those Mm -hmm. after this one Mm -hmm. or before, whatever you want, just come back. I'm excited to hear what you got planned. Um, Hollywood Studios is most of the time both of our favorite parks. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel like more often than not recently for you and it always is for me. So, Yeah, no, I'm a big fan of Hollywood Studios, so it should be be good. I'm not going to lie. It's a very just like average day though yeah yeah but i mean that could be helpful if listeners are looking for ideas for like a normal day yeah but i didn't do too much craziness nothing too much extra um we've said before on these perfect day episodes they're still within a pretty reasonable budget Mm -hmm. we have done budgetless trip episodes where it's like what would you do if money didn't matter yeah but these are like on a normal day, we could do this. We might yeah. go be going a little bit harder than normal, but might, like not crazy. Might spend a little bit more than we normally would, but not spending hundreds of extra dollars on food that we don't need. Except for <laughs> your perfect day at Animal Kingdom that we did the math and it was like over a thousand dollars for one day. That was different. <laughs> <laughs> totally normal. Just keep it completely average if you're a millionaire. It's fine. same same but different before we talk about my perfect day though we have some really exciting disney news mm, important really important (laughs) disney i don't know that all of it's exciting i would say like three out of four things okay all of these things kind of tie back to each other so don't worry it's not going to be as bulky of a news segment as you think so all right let's start with the Good news? We'll start with the good news piece. We'll sandwich it. We'll do the classic sandwich. Yes. So the first thing that we have is that Disney announced that you can now book your vacations for 2025. They announced this a few days ago. So at the time that you're listening to this episode, you can book your trip up until October of 2025. So if you're ready to start booking, start planning, put that down payment, and then make your payments on it, you can do that now. Segue into the rest of our news. Another good piece of news is that they announced that extended evening hours and and early morning and magic early morning magic both of those are continuing through 2025 as of right now. Yes, and for anyone who doesn't know, early morning magic is for people who are staying at a Walt Disney World resort and extended evening hours are select nights mm-hmm. after the park closes they allow people who are staying at a deluxe resort mm-hmm. to stay for an additional 2 hours. So both of those are continuing through 2025 at the moment. Usually those are on Mondays and Wednesdays. They never make it super convenient for people who like weekend trips. <laughs> that's okay, though. Which is, which is fair, because that's it's when fair. they're getting the most people anyway. It's, they, they don't need it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, bad news or the last piece of good news? Bad news sandwiched with good news. Okay. So bad news. Uh, Disney just announced as well that there will be a price increase for 2025. It's one of those things that, like, It sucks, but we knew it was coming. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. Um, Usually at least once, sometimes twice a year, they raise the ticket prices. So they announced that for tickets for January 1st, 2025, the lowest ticket price is now going to be $119. It's currently $109. $5 to $10, I think, was where I saw most of the ranges of increases. So Yeah, because well, they now they do the whole date bake. Date based, park yeah. based ticket. So, like when it was 109 at Animal Kingdom, it still might have been like 130 at Magic Kingdom. Yeah. So now you're going to see 119 at Animal Kingdom and 150 at Magic Kingdom that day. So they couldn't possibly make it easy on us. No. <laughs> Everything's got to be different every day. <laughs> well, but the park, the price being based on the park is only for a one day ticket. If you yeah. buy a multiple day ticket, there's just a set price. Yeah. And the last piece, the good news, or fun news. I'm going to call this fun. Disney also announced that if you are staying at a Walt Disney World Resort, on the day that you check in, you can go to the water park for free. 
So whatever water park is open that day, whether it's Blizzard Beach or Typhoon Lagoon, if you check in, you can go on your check-in day. You don't even have to be in your resort fully yet. As long as it's your check-in day, you'll be good to go. Which is awesome. Kind of make... If you're a water park person, it kind of makes up for the fact that ticket prices were raised. Part of me questions if that's why the ticket prices were I raised. <laughs> and I was like, wow, look at this. And the best part was they did the water park announcement on, I don't remember the exact days of the week, but it was like they did that on Monday and then Tuesday. They were like, oh, yeah, and we're raising yeah, the tickets. Like, could we have avoided the ticket increase with just not doing the free water park day? Because I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I'll give it up. That's fine. <laughs> but, hey, if I get a free day at the water park. I'll take it. Yeah, it's fun. You can just get there and go in the lazy river and relax. Kind of useless in the winter time, but you know. No, because winter here is like thirty degrees, and winter there in Orlando is going to be like sixty degrees some days. So we might still want the water park. All the northerners are going to be like down there at the water yeah. park. Everyone in that coming from the Midwest is going to be like, oh, it's it's fifty degrees. That's warm. <laughs> but yeah, obviously the water park is like. Subject to availability, weather, all yeah. that fun stuff. There's no, not numerical. What's like a, like a financial value to it? Like uh-huh. if the water park is closed on your check-in day, sorry. Yeah, you're just missing out on it. You're just missing day. out on it. Free day. Complimentary. <laughs> it's complimentary. It's like a buffet at a res- at a hotel. At a restaurant. It's like a buffet at a hotel. It's complimentary. You did yeah. pay something for it. Yeah. So, if all of this sounds amazing to you. If you want to get that 2025 trip booked, oh my God, did we say the water park dates? So they announced that's from January 1st to December 31st of 2025. This is not starting soon. <laughs> Sorry, that was, whoa, we is, really should have. Yeah, this is when you book your 25 trips. <laughs> yes, this is not for now. This is for 2025. So if you want to book the 2025 trip, if you are ready to book it, we want you to use our friends over at 407 and Beyond Vacation Co. So many of them have posted different examples of prices for vacations in 2025 Mm -hmm. and how much they can break it down to literally the one girl had to break it down at like $30 a week (laughs) for their, if for, I think it was a family of four with park hoppers and maybe a group of two with park. I don't remember what it was, but it was, (laughs) it was a good deal. So go ahead and check out our friends at 407 and beyond vacation co. They're a Disney and universal Orlando travel agency that books and plans family vacations to destinations such as Walt Disney World, Universal Orlando, Disney Cruise Line, so much more. doesn't cost any extra to book with them. Their services are 100% free, and their travel agents are going to do everything so that all you have to do is show up, have fun, and create the family memories. Like I said, right now, all you need is a $200 deposit. Mm -hmm. If you book a trip for October of 2025, you can pay it off every month until September of 2025, and that's pretty awesome. cheap doing that from now until September of 2025. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if you're doing that, it kind of gives you the opportunity to splurge a little more. You know kinda, what I mean? Because yeah. you're breaking it down a little bit more, so you might be like, you know what? I'm going to wait an extra few months and then stay at a moderate resort or stay yeah. at a luxury resort rather than a value that you would normally stay at. So yeah. I feel like it really can give you some opportunity. Yeah, it might be a lot more st- stomachable for some people if they're paying $80 a month for the next... 12 months yeah. as opposed to paying it all at once. <laughs> well, that's like if you have like a monthly Sam's Club trip, you just buy a gift card every month uh-huh. and then you put it on there. Makes yeah. sense to me. But if you want to book with them, head over to www.407vacations.com and they'll help you get started with one of their travel agents. Very nice. Did I not say that? No, I don't think you did. <laughs> I'm out of it today. This is going to be really interesting hearing me talk about my perfect day. Yeah, let's hear it. Oh, we're going right into it. What else do you want to talk about beforehand? No, I guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we can. I guess we can talk about it. I had popcorn in my park bucket today. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> I took a bite of it. It tasted better in the popcorn bucket. It always does. It was also Orville Redenbacher, so there's that. You think we get sponsored by Orville Redenbacher? We should reach out to them. We do love Orville Redenbacher. <laughs> I splurged one time and bought Orville Redenbacher because, well, I didn't splurge. It was on clearance. It was cheaper than the knockoff <laughs> brand and became addicted. It's definitely the best popcorn. It's for sure better. My, right after whatever popcorn Disney uses. What if it was Orville Redenbacher? That would be crazy. Hold on. What brand of popcorn does Walt Disney World use? Pop Secret. Huh. Hmm. The official popcorn of the Disney parks. That's what it says. Interesting. Wait a minute. Hold on. 
Oh, we got we got breaking news. Breaking news. At one point, it was Orville Redenbacher, <laughs> but they changed it to Pop Secret. Huh. Oh, duh. We're stupid. It's literally written on the Fantasmic sign, <laughs> and now I'm picturing it. That's funny. <laughs> wow. But yes, it was Orville Redenbacher before. So if it tastes different to you, that's why. <laughs> and that's your fun fact of the day. Okay, now. <laughs> now my perfect day. We are starting out with Rope Drop. We're actually... Absolutely. We're staying on Walt Disney property. Where? I think I want to stay at Beach Club. Okay. So we're going to stay at Beach Club for this trip. And then that way we're on the Skyliner. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take the Skyliner right to Hollywood Studios. Get dropped off right at the front. That sounds great. Perfect. We get there. We can get into the park by 8.30. We're already in line by like... 7.45, 7.45, 8 o'clock, pretty early so that we are first in line. And I'm not a morning person. I just want to share this with the listeners. I'm really not. Disney is different. And as much as I dread waking up, like, the actual act of waking up is terrible for me. Yeah. Once I'm up and moving in Disney, I can just keep going. And as soon as I get to the park, it's like, oh, yeah, this is why I'm doing this. And so if you're questioning if you should rope drop, try it one day. Try it your first day. And if you get there and you don't have that feeling of, oh, this is why I did this, then Mm -hmm. don't do it again if you don't want to. But I do think that if it's your first time in Disney, you do need to give it a shot. Yeah. Getting rope drop for anyone who doesn't know is getting there first thing in the morning before the park even opens. You are the first people at the front and they drop a a rope and you can walk. Like there's a rope block in your entrance. Pro tip, go with someone who's the opposite of you because I'm very good at waking up and then it's when I am awake that it's the problem. So I do the waking up <laughs> on the trips and then Gina keeps us awake for the rest of the day. I'm a night person. <laughs> I'm an everything person in Disney, but but yeah. I, I, really... still, I still have to push you awake sometimes. No, it's like once, but once I'm awake, I'm Yeah, good. exactly. Yeah, no, it definitely is you need – I really think that you do need to push through. And again, if you don't have that moment of, oh, this is why we do this. Yeah. Oh, this is great. We just got on a bunch of rides before the park even opened. Yeah. Don't do it again. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But I do think you got to give it a shot. So. We're rope drop in. What are we rope dropping? We are going in and we are immediately turning right onto Sunset Boulevard. Awesome. And we are rope dropping Tower of Terror. Yes. My Love favorite it. ride. Love it. Oh, just I can never pick <laughs> favorites. It's up there on my favorite rides. So we're rope drop and Tower of Terror. Uh-huh. And because we were there so early, we are some of the first people because we also went to Tower of Terror while everyone else goes to Slinky Dog and Rise of the Resistance. Mm-hmm. So we're going to Tower of Terror, getting off Tower of Terror, and hopping on Rock and Roller Coaster. Makes sense. We're right there. We're right there. There's no line yet. If it is starting and there is somehow a line that early, we'll do a single rider. But that's not going to happen because here's the thing. When you rope drop, when you get there at 8.30, people who have bought lightning lanes, the lightning lanes haven't started yet. So even if it looks like the line might be starting to pick up, if it's still before 9 a.m. when the park is open, that line is just going to keep moving. And it's going to go so much quicker than it will later in the day. So stay in line. We missed a part. What? What time of year are we there and who are you with? You can come with me. Oh, Do you want to come? That's very nice of you. Do you want to come? Sure. Okay, yeah. (laughs) So you can come. Um, and I actually really struggled with the time of year because I did Christmas time for Magic Kingdom. Mm-hmm. I love Christmas time at Hollywood Studios. That's fair. I really do. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and it has just that like old vintage Christmas feel, if yeah. that makes sense. But I felt wrong picking it when I had already picked it for Magic Kingdom for my perfect day. I feel like I got to like... Pick a different season for every park or something like that. Okay. So, I'm going to pick, it's like now. We're going to go with like February. Okay. Or like January or February. So, kids are in school. We're there in the middle of a day on a Wednesday. The park's not crowded at all. It's a little crowded because it's still Disney and Disney has been nonstop crowded for the last however many years. But it's like, it's not chaotic. Yeah. A little chilly in the morning, and then it warms up as the day goes It's like on. sweatshirt and shorts weather. Yeah. Like that, like, good, good. Mm. Yeah. So that that's what I'm picking. Okay. I love it. Yeah, I love that time of year, so I'm good. Was there any other questions? Uh, what time of year and who am I with? Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's just the two of us, I guess. Unless anyone else wants to come, you guys are all more than welcome to. Um, and then we're going to be there, like, the beginning of the year. Gotcha. No holiday bowl, everyday day. Okay. Okay. So we just rope dropped Tower of Terror and Rock and Roller Coaster. Love it. If I'm being honest with people, on a normal day, what I would do then is check the wait times. And if the line for Toy Story Mania has not gotten crazy yet, I have been known to book it to Toy Story Land and hop on Toy Story Mania. Yeah. We're not going to do that today. Okay, where are we going? We're going to say that by the time we got off Rock and Roller Coaster, the park was open. Okay. And the lines were kind of starting. So what we did is we went to Hollywood Scoops. Okay. And we got the blueberry Mickey waffles. Oh, okay. I'm, I was, I'm glad we're getting breakfast. We're getting breakfast. Don't worry. You can head over to Joffrey's if you want to get a donut. I but I'm getting the wrap. blueberry waffles. Oh, we're not getting over there for a little bit. You're more than welcome to just go, but I, <laughs> on my perfect no, day. It's a, little, it's a little far to go get a Ranta wrap, so I'll make do with the blueberry waffles for now. The eggs just freak me out. I don't know how you eat those eggs. Eggs are delicious. I know, but it's like, why is it so perfectly shaped? Because the the thing they get it from. No, it reminds me of the like the Wawa Sizzly eggs. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I can't eat those. I learned the hard way. Don't eat those before a rugby game. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's the sizzly part. That's not the egg part. I think it's the, I told myself it's the egg it's part. The so, part of the so now I can, I just won't do like the Ronto <laughs> eggs. Okay. So yeah, we're getting the waffles. Now these waffles come from Hollywood Scoops, which is an ice cream place later in the day. Yeah. There are tables behind it that you can sit, but what we're going to do actually is we're going to take the waffles and we're going to walk with them. Okay. And we're going to walk and hop in line for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Score. So at this point, it's probably roughly like 930 in the morning. Like we got our waffles, we walked over. So the lines are starting. Now the guests who aren't staying on Walt Disney World property, they've already been in the park for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. They all ran to... Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, Slinky, Rise, Rise of the Resistance, yeah. and Mickey and Minnie's. Especially the people with little kids who the Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and Slinky Dog are the first places they're going. Yeah, especially because Mickey and Minnie's is like the first thing you see. Yes. So we're going to hop in that line. It's going to be a little long, but not what it would be later. Okay, so like we're starting inside still, but it's the full inside part of the queue. Yeah, or maybe, like, a little bit outside. Like, it's probably going to be, like, a 30-minute wait. And okay. while we're standing there, we're going to enjoy our Mickey waffles. That's fair. Like, we're, we're going to gonna... extra Mickey waffles, then. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to eat. Well, if we each have our own, and then we just go for it. True. What do the Mickey waffles come with? We've never gotten them. I do want to get them next time we're there, though. Whipped cream and strawberries. They don't come with ice cream? I wish. They should. They should. They don't start doing ice cream there until later, unfortunately. I think they would make so much more money if they put ice cream with those waffles. I completely agree. <laughs> Sorry, I just looked it up just to be safe. It's not strawberries. It's blueberries, whipped cream, and syrup. Blueberries makes a little more sense. Yeah, but a blueberry waffle with strawberries on the side, that would be so good. Eh. Eh? Eh. Eh? Stick with the blueberries. <laughs> and Why not both? <laughs> Give me some vanilla bean ice cream, Disney. Come on. <laughs> See how weird I want chocolate yeah, ice yeah. cream on I it. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the chocolate. All the chocolate. You can get mimosas there. Is that kind of what it's served with? <laughs> no, because it's not vanilla ice cream. Yeah, but we can just get a mimosa. Oh. Have you ever had a mimosa float? I feel like that would be good. I don't know how that would be. Like a mimosa with vanilla ice cream in it. Can you put chocolate ice cream, ice sure. cream in champagne and have that work? You can put ice cream in anything. You can put champagne in anything. I don't see why not. Champagne's bubbly like root beer. It's like a root beer float. Should we try this? Yeah, I think I'd be more grossed out by the orange. Although it might it might probably make it like a creamsicle. It probably would, yeah. Or like a pog juice mimosa float. Is this too much? So pog would be passion fruit, orange, and guava. How about we just start and then with we the start orange. with the champagne and then put that in and then put a scoop of ice cream. How about we just start with the orange first, see how that is? But I prefer good... pog juice over orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> See, but orange juice is one thing of juice that we need to get. Pog juice is three things of juice that we need to get. We'll figure it out. We should do that and then post us us making it on our... I guess we'll let you know how it is. <laughs> Don't you worry. Okay. Sorry. So, we're enjoying our waffles in line. 
or enjoying our mimosas in line. We're having a good time. We hop on the ride. We have a great time. One of the best rides as far as rides Disney has made in recent years, in my opinion. It's just so fun and it's so Disney. Yeah. You know, like it's very much like old school Disney, but with like new technology. And I deeply appreciate that. Okay. So we get off there. Mm Mm-hmm. Now we're going to the ride that is in contention with Tower of Terror on my favorite ride in Disney. Ooh. You know what it is? Toy Story Mania? Yeah. I love Toy Story Mania. I cannot be beat. So you like that better than Guardians? Yeah. Okay. I do. Okay. But I like the competition aspect of it. That's fair. Like, the competition is what makes it fun for me. Makes sense. The competition and, like, the fact that it's so interactive. Like, Guardians is a great ride. And that's also up there with Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is one of the best rides Disney has made in recent years, but for different reasons. Yeah. But that's like a whole other podcast episode, <laughs> so it's fine. So Toy Story Mania. We're going to ride that. Okay. I feel like I missed something. No, we're going We're going right to Toy Story Mania after. So right now, it's by the time we get off Toy Story Mania, we're going to say that we get on it at like 10, 15, or we get in line for it like 10, 15. Okay. Uh, this is when the lines... They're going to start picking up, but again, we didn't go on a super crowded day. It's a Wednesday uh, in the middle of January slash February, so... So we're good. Yeah, it's really not too bad. We wait a few minutes, then we get on it. We didn't buy Genie Plus or anything today, because we're, we're savvy. We <laughs> did, however, buy an individual lightning lane. Ooh, what for? We bought the Rise of the Resistance lightning lane. What? We might have time to get a rock wrap. We might have time. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> it hasn't been called yet. We're not uh, going yeah. there yet. <laughs> you just have that look on your face like you like Krabby Patties. Don't you squirt word. <laughs> You're like, I wish I could frame the face you just made you for you. Can. We're recording. Oh, that's true. Can you make it at the camera quick? I don't even know what I did. You were like, that nah, was more than that. <laughs> it was really good, though. It was really good. Um, okay, so we ride to our story mania. I kick butt, obviously. Except for you lost to me still. It happen. never happens, but it's fine. We do have the power-ups. We, we unlock every power-up. Okay. Which we... Should we tell the listeners some of the power-ups? Yeah, why not? Okay. Renner doesn't know. Here are the power-ups. Secret time. Secret time. This is how you unlock more points in Toy Story Mania. Mm. I can't remember the order that the rooms go in currently. Mm. <laughs> when you're in the robot room... Clear all of the aliens that are in the middle, in the little pyramid in the middle. Clear all of those. Up, like whack-a-mole? Yeah. Clear yeah. them all in one go. It'll open the robot's mouth. You can shoot the ho- hoops into the robot's mouth as many times as you can get them, and it'll give you a lot of extra points. Yeah. When the plates are flying up, if you hit every plate that's shooting up, you clear those, right? Yeah, the ones that are shooting straight up and falling back down. Yes. Yeah, so you clear those. It'll up the score, and it'll shoot higher points at you. When you are, oh, when you're hitting the chicken in the hen house, get the fox in the hen house. Yeah. So you need the, the fox will be running around. You have to clear that. So hit the fox out of the hen house. It'll flip the whole thing and then things will be worth more. The volcano. Yeah. So the volcano balloons come out of it. So the first one will be one balloon. You pop the one balloon. Then two balloons come out of it. You pop those two. They look like lava shooting in the air. Yeah. They're squiggly ones. Yes. And then three come out. You clear all three. And after that, it'll shoot out a bunch of high priced. Mm-hmm. High valued balloons. Yeah. And then there is oh the targets. The targets that come down. So what you have to do, the targets come from every corner. It's just like the target board. Like it looks like a bullseye. Oh, okay. So they come from like every corner. I think there's like eight total you need to clear. So you open all of them and then you cl- and when you open it, it each opens with like three more. Oh, uh, this is the Wild West looking one. Yes. So it like you hit it, it opens with like three more. You hit all of them, so they all open with three more, and then you clear all of them at one time, and then it'll reopen with higher-valued um, scoreboards. Yeah. That was the quick version yeah. of of the points. We did an episode years ago at this point where we told you all the hacks for yeah. the rides. We can do another one where we break that down a little bit more, Yeah. but that is just the, the quick version of here is how you score high. Best way to do it is to actually work together as a team. You'll score more points. Yeah. Work together as a team, but still be better than but, the other person. Yeah. <laughs> Rick's never done that, but he has worked together as a Every team. Time I do that. He's just never been better. Every time. 
mediocre at best. Okay, it's so like Mario Party. I just can't remember the last time I lost. What's today? Like like a week ago, I think you lost. Yep. Nope. <laughs> yes. Oh no. There's some things I don't lose. Toy Story Mania, Mario Party, Mario Kart. Oh, that's not true. I beat Mario Kart all the time on the Switch. Mario Kart Wii champion. We're getting the Switch for my parents. The Wii. Yeah. Oh. We have a Switch. I meant the I meant the Wii. Yeah. We're getting it for my parents. It's We're fine. gonna settle this. It's fine. Okay, so <laughs> we're getting off Toy Story Mania, and this is this is the happy moment of the day. So, <laughs> not that I'm not happy all day, but this is what I'm going to get my root beer float from Woody's Lunchbox. Nice. At this point, you're probably starving. I haven't, probably. I didn't decide if I would be hungry here or not. So, if you're hungry, you can get your brisket sandwich that I know you're going to get. Mm-hmm. If I'm hungry, I'll get my tachos, or honestly, the brisket sandwich, both delicious, or... This one really depends on Rick or whoever else I'm with if because you know I invited all of the listeners and whoever else wanted to come. If you're in the mood for sweets. The Pop Tart? No. Yeah, I would no, send that, you No, it's really I don't get the hype. I'm not a fan of the Pop Tarts. It's like kind of dry and yeah. like I've I've tried a few different ones and just have never never really yeah. got behind it. It's like kind of dry but like really sweet. Yeah, sorry. What what we're getting? Oh, so I would send you to go get the root beer float, whatever you're getting, and then if I'm really hungry, oh, like okay. the tachos or the brisket, and I would go back to the neighborhood treats, and I would get the neighborhood bakery, I'm sorry, oh, Okay. and I'd get the Jack Jack Num Num cookie. A root beer float and the Jack Jack Num Num. Doesn't that sound amazing? And I had blueberry waffles for breakfast. That sounds Wait, like a stomach ache waiting to happen. This whole day is just sweet. That I horrible. <laughs> I'm a firm believer that Hollywood Studios food is not good, but they have the random little things that are like, oh, no, but they have that. So, like, they don't have the best quick service, but, like, they have Woody's Lunchbox. So your perfect day includes me throwing up from all of the sweets that you're making me eat throughout the day. No, I mean, <laughs> you didn't have to eat the waffles. You could have starved until we got to, toy- to Woody's Lunchbox. Yeah. Or survived on the popcorn from the night before that was still in the bucket. <laughs> and you don't have to eat the Num Num cookie, although I would appreciate if you could take a few bites because it's a really big cookie, and I, yes. I, I am a huge sweets person, and I couldn't finish it. Yeah, it's tough. Uh-huh. It's a rough one, so. It's warm, at least. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good, guys. It is this giant cookie. And it's it looks like a little mini pie. Yeah, if you haven't had the Jack Jack Nom Nom cookie, it's when you're going into Toy Story Land. So it's before you turn right, where you would turn right and see um, Buzz Lightyear standing there. Woody. Is it Woody? Mm-hmm. I was going to say, Buzz Lightyear's by the spinning things. Yeah. You'll pass one man's dream. It's like a little museum yeah, area. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's right next to the Joffrey's is where it's at. Mm-hmm. And that's where you get the Jack Jack Nom Nom cookie. It's kind of tucked away, so. It'll change your life. <laughs> it's so good. It is very good. And they have Pixar characters there sometimes, usually the Incredibles. Usually, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Just the whole vibes are immaculate. Cookie are, cookie is immaculate. Nom nom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we now have stomach aches. Where are we going next? We're just going to go right around. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> I figured that we would sit and relax for a few minutes with our root beer floats and our cookies and our brisket and our tachos. Who are you and what have you done with my life? No, like while we're eating. Just while we're eating. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm still on the move. So while we're eating, we're relaxing, we're hanging out. And then we're going into the lands that I know nothing about. Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I try. I think I can appreciate how cool it is. I just don't ever know what's going on while I'm in there, but it's it's really cool. I like the rocks. Can we get a Rata wrap? Yeah, I guess. Probably I mean, lunchtime it's, it's right lunchtime now. Those, now. Those are still good. It's lunchtime, but I thoroughly enjoyed the lunchtime Rata <laughs> wrap, honestly. So if you want to skip the brisket sandwich and get the Rata wrap, or the plan oh. was to go in and go right to Smuggler's Run once mm-hmm. we got into um, Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. So maybe we can ride that and then we can go get your round to wrap. We can mobile order it too while we're in line for a Smuggler's Run. That's that way good. it's ready when we get out. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Okay, perfect. So we're riding Smuggler's Run. Yeah, and there's a really short wait and it's so crazy. By the time we got to the front, they were like, oh my gosh, you two, pilots. And we were like, <laughs> yeah, 
Good idea. That's good because I have my license. So thank you, thank you. <laughs> I've actually been waiting to drive the Millennium Falcon for all of however long this line was. I don't I actually just saved the Galaxy actually. at Epcot yesterday. So kind of a big deal. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but the other day at Magic Kingdom, became a galactic hero. <laughs> it's the whole thing. So, yeah. Smuggler's Run. <laughs> we wrote it. We conquered it. It's cool. We beat the game. We beat the game. Actually, and we're going to write it in Chewy mode, so we're not really going to know what's going on, which is even better. <laughs> Chewy I do want, I want to get Chewy mode so bad, but don't you need uh, everybody for that? Uh, you need all six people. Everybody needs to be on board with it, and everything has to be done before the cast member like presses a certain button. Uh-huh. We've tried it before and didn't get it, but the cast member we got, like, was not there for it. <laughs> Which is crazy, because usually they're all for it. If you're like, this is what I want to do, they're like, okay. Like, he, I think he was having a bad day, because he was like, mm, better not. Nope. <laughs> you thought. <laughs> but I know Meg, like, Magical Meg, she just did it. Oh, she got it? Yeah, she put it on her most recent vlog, I think. She actually got it while, <laughs> this is really fun, for Valentine's Day, she, because she's single, went and did all of the single rider rides. So she awesome. did single rider on Smuggler's Run, and the group she was with just was like, "We're doing Chewy mode," so she got to do it because of that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's good luck, isn't it? Sometimes it pays to be a single rider. Yeah. But yeah, we got pilot nice. and, and Chewy mode, and we had a good time. Mm-hmm. Where are we off to next? To get you your Ronto wrap. Not August Cantina. No. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. I I don't have an interest in it. <laughs> I would like to go to a Marvel version of that. I want to go to like the bar that the in Guardians. Yes. Yeah, that'd be sick. I'm amazed that they that didn't make sick. that outside of Guardians of the Galaxy. It feels like the perfect spot to kind of shove that in there. They should have made that instead of Space Two Twenty. Yeah. Like they should have made. But Space Two Twenty is hooked up to Mission Space. Yeah. Like it's connected to that. Right, well, I guess we can get rid of Mission Space if you want. Dang it! <laughs> but Disney is like the. King and queen, whatever you want to call it, the champion of shoving stuff in places but making it seem yeah. seamless. Yeah. So I feel like they could have shoved in I that bar. The, the bar is like kind of an aggressive bar. But who knows? Maybe Oga's is. I don't really know the story <laughs> behind Oga's. I would imagine it probably is. I feel like a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah, it's bounty hunting. Or, it's got to yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. Imagine fights break out all the time. Yeah, they totally could have put the bar from Guardians of the Galaxy in there. Yeah, maybe it's not too late. Maybe they have plans to. Maybe, we'll take credit for it if they do. You're welcome, Disney. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> That'd be really cool. Yeah. So where were we? Oh yeah, so we're in Galaxy's Edge. So from there, we have ridden Smuggler's Run. Mm-hmm. Did you want to do any bounty hunting? Nah, it's okay. Okay, cool. From there. We are walking out the other side of Galaxy's Edge, and we are going to Baseline Tap House. Oh, that's so exciting. I want to go there. Yes. So this is where I did not get around to a wrap because I wanted an empty stomach for Baseline Tap House. And it's not that empty because about an hour ago, we got root beer floats and num num cookies and True. tachos, but empty enough for some good beer. There's, oh, a, there's always room for some There's beer. always room for a good beer. <laughs> so we go to Baseline Tap House. We get beer. We get the Bavarian pretzel. Mm. Served with the beer cheese and the mustard. Oh, the beer cheese is so good. Right, and we just sit there and we relax and have a good time. <laughs> any beer cheese, thank you. Do they have any specialty beers there, like that you can only get there? I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm looking at the beer menu, and it doesn't really sound like there's any that are exclusive. All right, I was just curious. But everything they have all sounds good. Ju- oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I would, without a doubt. Yeah, I'd without a doubt get a flight. I don't even know if I'd get a beer, to be honest. I saw cocktails on that list. Yeah, they have some good ones. So they have um, this Baseline Select Margarita and a California Sunset, which is vodka, Southern Comfort, orange juice, sweet and sour. That sounds amazing. With a float of pomegranate juice. That sounds so good. (laughs) That would actually probably be what I got. When I had said with a float, I was like, is it with ice cream? (laughs) Second float of the day. Did we figure it out? I would go for this bloody orange hard cider. Mm. I'm definitely Sounds a hard right cider girl. Oh, yeah. They have like a mango cart too, though. And you like mango carts. I do like mango cart, but that other drink sounded really good. There's a lot that we would get, honestly. And this is actually, I just saw this online. Someone shared it on Instagram. And shout out to them 
like five people have also sent it to me since they shared it, which I think is so funny. Mm. So there's sodas that you can get here. It's a strawberry hibiscus soda. And if you keep your cup and your receipt, you can go back and get refills that day. That's awesome. Yeah. So people, someone sent it to me and was like, why didn't we go keep going back for more beer? I was like, no, the beer is not refillable. <laughs> but the soda they have on tap I'm is refillable. Yeah, just, just the soda <laughs> is refillable. Can you imagine? I brought my souvenir cup. They also have a wild strawberry lemonade, so I would probably get that to walk with as we leave. Sounds good. Yeah. But we would sit there for a little while. we That's where we would just relax, because this okay. is getting to the part of the day when it is getting like more crowded. Mm-hmm. There's more people. It's just enjoyable sometimes to just sit down, take a load off, relax. People watch. People watch, which is actually on my schedule for later, too. <laughs> but you can do things like that when it's not a busy day, when you're yeah. not spending your entire day in line. So that's really helpful. Yeah. And from there, we have reached the show's portion of the day. And again, okay. this is because this is when it is going to be the most crowded portion of the day. And even though I said we were going in January, February, this is also when it's going to be the hottest portion of the day. Yeah. So, so we're going to go see some shows. What are we seeing first? Muppets, because it's right there. Ah, great show. Yes, we're going to go see Muppet Vision 3D. Top tier Disney Park show. <laughs> so underrated. <laughs> Only if you have a stupid sense of humor. If you don't yeah. have a stupid sense of humor, you're you just have, you're going to be so bored. If you have a um a British office sense of humor, you're not going to like it. If you have a US office sense of humor, you'll probably like it. You haven't watched either of those. But I've heard that the British, <laughs> I've heard that the British the office is very dry humor mm-hmm. and I've seen a little bit of the U.S. office, and it's very dumb it, humor. It's dumb, and, <laughs> dumb and pretty in your face humor. Yeah. yeah. If you like dumb and in your face humor, so Rick won't watch The Office, even though I've begged him to watch it multiple times. But if there are clips of it on, or if I have it on, he'll stop and stand there and watch it and laugh the whole time. Yeah. But he won't just sit down and watch the whole show. I don't have time to watch a lot of shows. No, but like, like but like, me. you never put it on when you sit down. No. So we're seeing Muppets. Nice. Then we are going to the Frozen sing-along. I feel like I haven't done this one in forever. This one just makes... We're going to go see it for the first time in forever. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> I almost didn't catch that. <laughs> I almost missed that all oop of a joke, everybody. <laughs> this one just makes me so happy. It's so funny, and it's somewhat different every time, which makes it great. Mm-hmm. Don't sleep on this one, people. Yeah, it's a good one. The seats are comfortable. It's mm-hmm. air-conditioned. It snows. It snows. Everybody in there is happy because you're just singing and watching people have a good time. And it's so funny. Yeah, the actors and actresses in that show just have such a good time. They're so good. They're yeah. They, they just genuinely are enjoying themselves. You can I tell. agree. I definitely agree. It's just so fun. Such a good time. Mm-hmm. So that's the second show that we're seeing. And actually... Even though Hollywood Studios has multiple shows, those yeah. are the only two that we are seeing. Indiana Jones is not as good as I, it was before. It, it ever since it. COVID, they changed it. They don't have any um, live like participation yeah. from the crowd, and they're just watching. I'm like, wow, this used to be so much better. Like, I just yeah. remember this being so much better. Yeah, it's just not what it used to be. No, don't love it. So I don't feel the need to see that anymore. I honestly. Part of me feels like its days are numbered, and I do think that they're going like, to get an earful when they get rid of it, but I was like a diehard Indiana Jones fan before. Not the movie. I've actually never fully seen the movie. The movies are really good. I tried to watch them, mm-hmm. and then something happened, and I didn't. <laughs> it was on. I got through the beginning of it, and then I, I know the gist of it. He's a mm-hmm. professor. <laughs> he was afraid of snakes. And he hunts treasure. And he didn't want to actually star in Star Wars, only Indiana Jones. Just learned that the other day. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> who is it? Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. And he plays Han Solo and... Yep. Indiana Jones. Yeah. And he thought Star Wars was going to flop or something. I'm like, <laughs> I don't have the full story, but that's the gist of it. So then, after we come out of Frozen, if we need a break in the air conditioning, like if it's still really crowded, oh. all the rides are looking like they're going to be a while, if we want to take a little bit, then we're going to go into the Mickey Shorts Theater. Okay. And we're going to watch the Mickey Shorts, okay. the vacation shorts. Mm-hmm. This was a really fun show. Yeah. 
kind of like slept on i'm not gonna lie mm-hmm. or people literally sleep in it because they don't mm-hmm. want to watch it but i think that the new mickey shorts are so funny i love the new mickey shorts i find them hilarious so this is one show that like if i have time and there's nothing else to do or like the other rides are really crowded like this one is usually like if you're next to go in you're going in you're not waiting multiple shows yeah so it's like every 10 minutes people are going in and it's just so good yeah the, the show is really good so funny so i would do that okay. i was gonna say that i would get a wookie cookie but I, yet. <laughs> I feel like you're right the sweets have been a little bit insane i have more sweets on the schedule for later <laughs> and last time i got a wookie cookie it was like really it. bad yeah. your last two times were a miss right well we got two because we went back and we were like something's wrong with this and they were oh sorry you gave us another one and it was still bad huh. so then we i haven't gotten one since I've liked all the ones I've gotten, so. Yeah, because every time we've got one, it was delicious. But this was like, me and Wyatt were so excited for this cookie. Mm. We were going to share it. And it was like, this is, uh, I was like, am I crazy or does this suck? <laughs> and he was like, no, 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 this sucks. This is not good. This is this is terrible. So I'm going to take that off the, the perfect day list. Okay. It's not consistent enough for me. <laughs> Could have just been that day. Because like you said, every other time it's been great. But yeah. it wasn't good that day. So since we're right there, we ride Star Tours. Mm-hmm. Another slept on ride. Yeah. Really good. Really old technology, but it's just fun. It's just You just laugh the whole time. It's just fun. It got better after they added in more storylines. I think so, too. And I felt like it became a smoother ride mm-hmm. after they did. I don't know if that's just me feeling like seeing what I want to see or if maybe the newer technology of the videos that they added in for the storylines made it feel smoother. Yeah, maybe. But I feel like it is smoother. Okay. Um, I didn't really notice. And then at that point, this is crazy luck, guys. You're never going to believe this. But Rise of the Resistance, our boarding group gets called right when we were leaving Star Tours. That's like, crazy. what? How convenient is that? What a perfect day. Uh, don't have to go back into Galaxy's Edge after this. What a perfect day. <laughs> Stop. I like Galaxy's Edge. I just Galaxy. don't know what's going on. <laughs> Which is how I feel about Rise of the Resistance, which is why I almost didn't buy an individual lightning lane. Guys, it took me, like, five times riding this ride to figure out what was happening. What's actually going on. Like, I'm still a little confused if the Resistance is the good or the bad people. I think it's the good people because it sounds... Yes, the Resistance is the good people. Because they're resisting the bad people. Or, yeah. Okay, wait, but isn't I the... believe it's called the, the First Order or something like that, and that's, like, Kylo Ren. Because Kylo Ren's the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. And then the resistance is the people fighting against him. So it's the rise of them fighting back. Yeah. But isn't there another word that begins with an R that the bad people go by? Rebels. Yeah. Doesn't that also sound like it should be good people? No, they call them the rebels. The bad people or the good people? The bad people call the good people rebels. So the resistance and the rebels are the same thing? I think so. You gotta stop sleeping through Star Wars so we can fully understand what's going on. (laughs) The confusion that I think I... the resistance and the rebels are the same people. It's just who refers to themselves as what. Like the resi- the good guys refer to themselves as the resistance, but the bad guys call the resistance the, the rebels. rebels. Yeah. You know, if you're wrong right now, our listeners are going to attack us. Okay. That's fine. Teach us. Teach Last... us. <laughs> teach us the Star Wars way, young Padawan. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Star Wars? Is that Star Wars? Yeah, Padawan is that. Isn't it right? (laughs) No, wait, that's not Karate Kid. No, that's Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, we got this. Yeah, okay, so Star Wars (laughs) Rise of the Resistance. All I know is I want Samuel L. Jackson's lightsaber if I ever got one. Because he's a good guy. He's the only one with a purple lightsaber, that's all I know. But we don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. I think he's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's the only one with a purple lightsaber. People who like Star Wars have to be screaming right now. <laughs> because this, like, if someone was talking about Marvel like this, I would be like, oh my god, are you kidding me? I have to explain this ten times. Like, if I Brian's been... listening right now, he's got to be like, I've explained this to you guys 50 times. I have been like that, listening to people talk about Marvel before. Yeah, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's not that hard. And people are probably like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Are you dumb or stupid? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, both? <laughs> when, it, when it comes to Star Wars, uh, yeah. <laughs> I tried. I did watch it. 
I've watched some of them. I'm excited for the new Battlefront game. There's some news for you. Is that Star Wars? Yeah, the battle. It's basically Call of Duty, but Star Wars, and they're um, remaking it for all the new game systems, like the Switch. Switch, yeah. So, Call of Duty, but like with lightsabers. Yeah, so with lightsabers with the uh, blasters that they have and <laughs> stormtroopers and everything. Like it's literally just like Call of Duty, but you're stormtroopers and Star Wars characters. Can't everyone not use a lightsaber? Only people who can... I, I don't think the game's that serious. Okay. And also there might not be lightsabers. I could be wrong about that. But I know they okay. have their blasters and stuff. Okay. The only reason I even knew that one was Brian was just talking about it in the car the other day. And he was talking about how the one guy who used to be a stormtrooper was able to yield a lightsaber. And I was like, I thought everyone could hold a lightsaber. But apparently there's so you much... You have to be a Jedi, I think, to have a lightsaber. Yeah. That's what he said in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and I was driving and just kind of listening. Uh-huh. I felt like I was listening to a Star Wars podcast because he just went off about it. <laughs> and I was actually really trying to understand what he was saying. So, that would make sense then. See, see, I know Star Wars people. I wish we could, like, have it where we just, like, phone him in. Every time a Star Wars comes up and he's just here to clarify. <laughs> this is our Star Wars expert of the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brian, here's our question for you. No, because he, he would go off right now. This would become a three-hour podcast. <laughs> We've gone from Hollywood Studios straight into being a Star Wars podcast. <laughs> okay, so we rode Rise of the Resistance. We had the individual lightning lane making our way extremely short. We basically just walked yeah. on, which is really cool. That is one thing I really like about that ride, is the line is continually moving, mm. whether you're in the regular line or the individual lightning lane. Like, even if you get stopped, it's never for as long as it feels like you get stopped on other rides, in my opinion. Yeah. Unless the ride breaks down. Yeah. So, from there, the next thing we have is actually dinner. But, I gave like a little bit of leeway, so because of where we're at, we're at Rise of the Resistance, which is towards the back of the park. Okay. So my plan is dinner at 50's Primetime Cafe. Okay. If there's some time before our dinner reservation, we're either going to ride Toy Story Mania again because okay. I want to get a second ride on that. Or if that line's long, we're just going to go walk through One Man's Dream for a little bit. Okay. And just kind of see it. One Man's Dream, for anyone who doesn't know, is almost like a Walt Disney Museum. It's like his whole life. And then they have a little video you can watch at the end. They usually have a character at the end as well. It's by the Little Mermaid show. Yes, it is. Right which is to. not currently happening, so it's not on my list. So I put that we would walk through that if we needed a little bit extra time okay. to kill, if we had something else. Um, but yeah, so we have dinner at prime, 50s Primetime Cafe. Nice. What are we getting? First, I want to share. I was torn between there and Mama Melrose. Okay. I, it, unpopular opinion. I really like Mama Melrose. So we're going to 50s Primetime Cafe. Mm. We have fried chicken. Nice. Or meatloaf. One of the two. Very different. But the thing that we're doing is we actually got the Fantasmic Dining Package. Which is? So this is where you prepay for your meal, or you okay. pay a set price for your meal, mm-hmm. and you get either an appetizer and an entree and a non-alcoholic drink, mm-hmm. or entree and dessert and non-alcoholic drink. Okay. And then you have reserved seating for Fantasmic later in the night. Beautiful. So we did this. I actually have the prices pulled up if you'd like me to share real quick. I would. I got you. <laughs> I'm just excited we're not sitting at the very top corner. No, no, no. We have... For some reason, no matter how early we get there, we always end up at the very top because corner. Because they save so much space in the middle for the people with these dining packages. Sure. So we went to 50's Primetime Cafe. Cafe, 44... Fi- Got this. I believe in you. <laughs> $54 per adult. 23 for a child. Hollywood and Vine is $75 for adult. Okay. Or forty nine for a child. That's for lunch and dinner. Breakfast is fifty nine or thirty nine. Hollywood and Vine is a buffet, so you get more food for this price, and it's a character dining. Okay. So this costs more than what the buffet would normally cost, but you're at, you're paying for that reserve seating. Yeah. Mama Melrose is fifty six dollars per adult, twenty three per child. Sci fi j- dine in also an option, fifty one per adult, twenty three per child, and the Hollywood Brown Derby seventy seven for adult, thirty one per child. So basically, any sit-down restaurant you can do this package deal with? Yes. Okay. 
Good and, to know. Yeah, that's all. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Woody's Barbecue. Oh, uh, Roundup Rodeo. The Roundup Rodeo. Yes, I'm sorry. That was – whoa. Uh, yeah, Roundup Rodeo is not included in this. I, all of the other sit-down restaurants, yes. Gotcha. In, Mag- in Hollywood Studios. So what you do is you actually just go like you're reserving dining, and instead of picking the restaurant, you pick Fantasmic Package, and it'll give you what's available. Gotcha. So some of the restaurants might be sold out of their package for that day. Okay. Makes sense. Yes. But then you'll get reserved viewing – it's reserved viewing for the first showing of Phantasmic. That's how they have it listed on there. But if there's only one, it's just whatever one. So on this day in my fantasy world right now, there's only one. Okay. And it's the one at 930, which is after the park closes. So nice. that'll come back to be important. to people. But yeah, so we're going there. Do you want to see the menu and decide what you're going to eat? Yeah, I'll just look at it and be sad that we're not going to Roundup Rodeo. I'm sorry. I thought about it for you lunch. they could import the corn? Sure. 50s. Yeah, absolutely. Anything for you. <laughs> I mean, they probably have corn. <laughs> yeah, but it's not the same. If anybody's tried the corn since the corn episode, they have, and the and people you have thoughts. Let me know. We get so many messages from on Instagram about people trying this corn, <laughs> and it cracks me up. Do they mostly like it? Yes, every single person is like, "This corn's amazing." <laughs> it's they, so good. Thank you, Rick. I, I have your back. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> But yeah, so my uh, my appetizer, I would either do the onion rings or the tomato soup. Okay. That sounds really good. My entree, I want Aunt Liz's golden fried chicken. Fair. Aunt Liz sounds like she knows what she's doing. That's what I'm saying. And for my drink, I don't know if the milkshakes are included in it or not. So I'm just going to go with the, the ye old pomegranate lemonade because I love a good lemonade. But if the milkshakes are included, I'd probably go peanut butter and jelly milkshake because that's a classic when you're at 50s prime time. And if you can't True. get it while you're sitting in there, if you can't get a reservation or you don't want a full sit down, go to the lounge and get that milkshake. The tune in lounge. So I think I'm torn. So it depends, I guess, on what the deviled eggs for the day are because apparently that changes every day. I don't know how you can have that many different. <laughs> kinds of eggs but if it's a good deviled egg day i'm gonna get those if not i'm gonna get the fried herb and garlic cheese which Ooh. comes with raspberry sauce grapes and apples which sounds amazing that sounds great so that's gonna be my appetizer um ooh, what do i want for dinner let's go with this is all like good home style cooking everybody the servers they talk to you like they're like your family like if you don't eat your vegetables you can't have dessert kind of thing it's a really fun time like they mess with you the whole time in a really fun way and that's partially why i picked this one over mama melrose even though i wanted italian food while i was making this list i'm gonna get the sampling of mom's favorite recipes so saw that coming Uh, it's golden fried chicken fork tender pot roast and traditional meatloaf with all the fixings i mean you get a little bit of everything everything um so yeah i'm definitely gonna get that and then mm-hmm. if i can get a vanilla milkshake as my drink i will not the peanut butter and jelly milkshake no you can have some of mine if you want i'll have a sip thanks you're welcome mm-hmm. okay yeah so that's dinner we'll be in there for a little bit everyone knows sit down restaurants do take a little bit yeah. of time especially with dinner from there we are so full we've eaten so much food so many sweets we've had such a good time that we're just gonna go to sunset boulevard and sit down and people watch all right yes right mm-hmm. I love people watching on Sunset Boulevard. (laughs) Live for this. So we're going to go sit down, people watch Sunset Boulevard. I'm going to do this with a drink in my hand. So I'm getting the Blackberry Moonshine Lemonade from Sunshine Day Bar. Okay. Which is right next to the produce stand that they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we'll we'll be heading there. You getting a drink? I'll get a pickle. Okay, that's fair. So I'll have my Blackberry Moonshine Lemonade. He'll have his pickle. We're all happy. It's fine. Sitting on a bench, people watching, enjoying the immaculate vibes that there are on Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. From there, we're getting towards the end of the night. It's getting dark. We're coming out towards... Here's what we're doing. We're going ham. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. We're riding Tower of Terror. Okay. Obviously. Full yeah. stomachs, alcohol and body. Yeah, Let's sense. do it. Let's ride Tower of Terror. We're, we're going to prove that we are still young. <laughs> I am. Rick will throw up. Then we're, gonna, then we're going to ride a rock and roller coaster. That one it might be an issue. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to ride Tower of Terror. I would be upset if we didn't. And we are going to ride Tower of Terror until the very last minute that we can to get in line 
to get the Phantasmic Dining Package seats. So we're just going to keep riding Tower of Terror? Yeah. Okay. Because why not? You do have to get there at a certain time when you have the Phantasmic Dining Package. They'll let you kind of squeeze in still if you get there a little bit later. But you do have to get there earlier than if you are just squeezing in at the end. Which stinks because Phantasmic starts at 9.30 and the park closes at 9. So usually you can sneak one last ride in right before the park closes and then run to Phantasmic. And that's how you end up in a corner seat rather than more towards the center. Or in the front row getting nice and soaked. Yeah. But with the dining package, it ends up being worth it. It does. Okay. So we're going to ride Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, Tower of Terror, Tower of Terror, Tower of Terror, <laughs> as many times as we can, even if that's only actually one time, until we have to get in line. Until five minutes before we have to get in line. Because that's when we're getting ice cream. Yeah. You knew that was coming? I saw it on your list. Oh, rude. <laughs> I thought you just guessed it. I was like, wow, he knows me. <laughs> Yeah, then we're going to go back to Hollywood Scoops where we were that morning and got the waffles and we're going to get ice cream because I love... Oh, we got ice cream, ice cream? I want the brownie sundae from Hollywood Scoops. Okay. I wasn't sure if we were just getting the normal ice cream sandwich and ice cream pop. So, on a perfect day, we have time to get a full sundae. Mm-hmm. On a day that we're rushing, we're just going to get the ice cream sandwich on the way in. Well, if I didn't get my milkshake at dinner, I'll probably get a milkshake then. Oh, Okay. Otherwise, I think I might just pass on the ice cream because that's a lot. You can't handle the sweets. I can't. You're on vacation. Go crazy. I just, My stomach just doesn't do it. I'll get another pickle or something. <laughs> Pickles and ice cream. Loved by pregnant women everywhere. And me. And Rick. <laughs> yes, then we go and we watch Fantasmic. And it's the best show they've ever put on. New World. The new one. I like the new one. Okay. I, I like the changes that they made. I think... The, they were very surprising changes in the best way, so oh. I, I'm cool with the new one. And I like the, even just small things, like just updating costumes and stuff like that. I think you can really see the difference when you're watching it. Okay. So, the new one. Why? Which do you prefer? I don't really have as much of a preference. Okay. But it's your favorite show, so I didn't know if you did. See, I say that. I, I have commitment issues with saying that something's my favorite in Disney. Because I'm like, what's my favorite nighttime show? Happily Ever After? Fantasmic. Happily Ever After. I don't know. I really, I, I really go back and forth. I, I don't think they're the same. I actually think I might enjoy the old Fantasmic better than the new one. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Man, a few words. All right. Yeah. I, 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 I thought I you were have, gonna expand on that. No, I don't have like an explanation for it. It's like the stuff in the middle. I think there's too much time with the water projections now. It's always been as long as it is. I think. I feel like it was shorter before. I don't think so. That's usually when my mind wanders. I don't know. I feel like, I, in my mind, it was the water projections were shorter in the old one. They might have been. I don't think they are, but they could have been. And, like, part of the reason that I don't like any of the Epcot shows is because of the water projections. It's too much. Just, like, look what we can do yeah. with water. Yeah. So, I think I like the old one better. Interesting. Okay. I'd like to see the timing on it. I really think that that hasn't changed at all, but it, it, it definitely have. could have. I don't know. But that's the end of our day. We watch Fantasmic. We're some of the last people to leave and just mosey out down Sunset Boulevard. We get our obligatory Tower of Terror photo as we're some of the only people left on Sunset Boulevard. It's my favorite. My favorite. Just moseying out of Hollywood Studios at the end of the night. It just makes me so happy. Empty Sunset Boulevard is my favorite. And Mm -hmm. this is going to sound kind of weird, but it's because... When the music is still going and you're the only people on Sunset Boulevard, it's very much like apocalyptic feels. That's a really weird reason like to love that. Like abandoned amusement park feels. Oh my gosh. And I love that. That's insane. <laughs> that's awesome. That's so funny. That that's how your brain works. I just think the vibes are great. But yeah, sure. The apop- apocalyptic vibes are <laughs> keep you coming back for more. Love to see it. <laughs> I'm never going to not think of that now. Thank you. You're welcome. Everyone's going to go to Hollywood Studios and be like, Rick told me to get the corn and experience the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> not experiencing the apocalypse. <laughs> I'm the only person left on Earth. Me and that cast member moving someone's stroller. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Good beds only. <laughs> That's it, though. We mosey on out. We might go through the shops a little bit and get some stuff on the way out. But the shops there are pretty much the same as they are in other parks. I didn't, not really anything too crazy. 
compared to other parks. So I'm also not really a shopper, which is why that didn't happen at any other point in the day. Yeah. It's not something that I feel like I need to do. So don't let the different Disney sweatshirt or t-shirt I wear every episode fool you. <laughs> if you're watching on the YouTube. As far on the YouTube. As far as um park shopping, I really only feel like I need to go in the stores at Magic Kingdom. Yeah, and even that, it's only if there's something specific I yeah. want, I think. If I'm like, oh, I wanted to look at this. Let me go see if they have most it. most things you can just get at World of Disney. To generic a point, things. yeah. Most to... of the generic stuff you can yeah. get there. So like you said, if you're looking for something specific. Yeah, like if I know I want something Tower of Terror, like I'll obviously yeah. look in that store. Yeah. But most of the time I don't get it anyway, so. Yeah. It's not a shopper. Mm-hmm. Unless it's mouse ears. But even those I don't really buy in the stores anymore. Yeah. Oh. Sounds like a good day to me. Thank you. Any questions I could, anything I can clear up for you? I don't think so. I think you went pretty in depth with everything. I know. I really tried because I told you guys I don't like just going <laughs> off with these episodes. So I really tried to. I like these episodes. I think they're fun. I like them too. Who am I kidding? I just had a great time. It's just the act of actually like writing it out and trying to figure out how I'm going to just talk about it for the whole time is like, I'm always worried I'm going to over talk about it. See, I feel like most of the time it's just let the conversation goes where it goes and then pick up where you left off. This is true. No. This is true. I'm glad people like them. Hmm? I like them now. This one. That one made me like it a little more. So mm-hmm. I like this one more than I liked doing the Magic Kingdom one. I had a good time. I think there was just too much in Magic Kingdom. That's it was fair. too hard to be like, and then this, and then this, mm-hmm. and then this. <laughs> yeah, I like them now. See, this is I have commitment issues. Okay, so that is all. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for coming back week after week. If you like what you heard, we really appreciate the reviews that you guys are leaving on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It is so helpful, just the stars, even writing something. Everything is so great, and we really, really do appreciate it. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much to everybody who already has. If you want to find us on social media, we are at Spill the D Podcast. You can also email us, Spill the D Pod at gmail.com. And if you want to watch the video, if you want to watch the podcast instead of just listening to it, you can find us over on 407 and Beyond's YouTube channel. Uh, all of our episodes do get posted on there as well. So go mm-hmm. check out their YouTube channel as well as our podcast on the YouTube channel. But that's all we have this week. So until next time, we will see you at the castle.